My name is Michael Peterson. I was born and raised in eastern Iowa in a small town car called Martell, uh, surrounded by cornfields. My childhood was a lot of going outside, going fishing in the creek, building forts, playing sports. When I went off to college at St. John's, I started learning more. I, my freshman year, I took a course called uh, Planet in Peril. And so this was in 2008, back when really the environmental movement, although it had been going on for a while, the climate change movement, I was really just kind of getting started. And so that kind of opened my eyes intellectually. And, you know, I learned about problematic aspects of industrial farming, but it was this somewhat uncomfortable paradox that I grew up on this farm surrounded by industrial farming with pesticides and Roundup. And yet I still fell in love with nature out in that area. So talking about carbon footprint um, or at least greenhouse gas emissions uh, is, is really important to understand what, what things we do in our life uh, contribute to that uh, and what things that we do in a scale of, you know, what, what's the most significant change you can make, you know, using a math equation uh, if, if I reduce my consumption of meat, uh, yes, we reduce emissions a lot. If I recycle plastics, maybe a little bit. Riding a bike saves, instead of a car, a uh, gasoline car, uh, saves emissions, uh, saves money, gets you some exercise, it's fun. Another, another way that I uh, try to reduce my carbon footprint uh, was inspired by a Jesuit friend who would uh, dry his clothes on racks or on lines instead of using a dryer to prevent the electricity or the natural gas that was used to dry the clothes because it just took a few more hours for the air to dry the clothes. So why not do that? So here we have uh, some kombucha brewing and it is called, this thing on top is called a, a SCOBY. It's actually a a symbiotic relationship uh, between bacteria and yeast. You can flavor it uh, and it can offset some of the aluminum cans that we that we use in, in other carbonated drinks. So what we see here is my uh, vermiculture setup, which is worm composting. Uh, it's, a, it's a homemade system that, that I looked up online. Just a simple garbage can. Uh, you start it with just some soil, throw the worms in and then you start feeding them. I, I go through the compost uh, a few times a week. I find coffee grounds or I find uh, you know apple cores, whatever whatever is in there that I know the worms will like. So that's the that's the green material uh, that they'll be able to eat uh, and break down. And then you also want to put brown material, so that is like uh, paper or you know cardboard. And the worms will will take care of it uh, over time, and it'll become soil uh, that I can use later. What you see here is uh, lion's mane mushroom, uh, which is an edible mushroom. It has a lot of health benefits. What's cool is that this, what it's living in, the substrate, uh, contains uh, quite a few coffee grounds from our compost. So, well, I didn't take them out of the compost, but I, uh, once, the, once people had brewed coffee, uh, I took them and I froze them and kept them up, up until the, the time I needed to make a bag for the mushrooms. And so what you see here is a mushroom that we're growing from our coffee ground waste. Uh, so now it will, the circle continues as we eat this. I've experienced many people who, uh, as I talk about either my, my diet, my vegetarianism, or um, other certain simple living things, my personal life story is much more impactful and kind of gets people to listen rather than talking about this kind of vague political movement. It gives me confidence to say what I know, just to speak the truth that I know about uh, environmental issues. Mm -hmm.